Hey everybody, sorry if the lighting's a little dim here, but it's nighttime I'm out on my back patio and I just photographed the comet. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Jason Yoder. I'm an Arizona-based photographer who enjoys capturing the world through the lens of my camera. I hope you find this channel entertaining and inspiring as I take you with me on my photography journey. Subscribe to my channel to enjoy more videos like this. All right, sorry, I don't have any idea how to pronounce that particular comet's name. Uh, but anyhow, let me guys show you something here. And again, sorry, it's gonna get a little dim. You guys can see, I'm actually doing, my, I got the camera rolling right now, doing my dark frames. What I just did, well, first of all, here's the first picture. And I was able to see it while well, the, there's still light in the sky, which was amazing. But I'm shooting from the north end of Phoenix, and I'm shooting through the light dome, the light pollution of Phoenix, trying to get this thing. So what I did is I've got my uh, RF 100-500 uh, setup. I've got it uh, all the way extended out to 500 millimeters. And I just let it roll on the intervalometer for 20 minutes because I'm going, I want to uh, do a deep sky stacker on it just to see what it does with the light pollution. Now, the settings was uh, F6.3. I was doing one second exposures at an ISO of 1600. So let's see if it turned out. Here it is. First order of business is to load up my light and dark frames into deep sky stacker. I set the program to mosaic mode. Since the camera was fixed, I allowed the comet to move throughout the photo. I wanted to stack as much of the captured photos as possible, so Mosaic was the best choice. I ran into a problem with the stars not being detected due to the high degree of light pollution from the city. So I clicked Register Checked Picture and then clicked the Advanced tab. I had to turn the star detection all the way down to 2%. Eventually, it was able to detect 11 stars to line the photos with. The stacked result was not impressive, but wait, we still have work to do. In Adobe Photoshop, I opened the Levels tool and slid the right slider all the way to the left. Then in Camera Raw, I increased the contrast, decreased the blacks, increased the whites. The light pollution casts a lot of yellow in the sky, so I cooled the temperature down a bit. I also gave the vibrance and the dehaze a little bump up. Back in Adobe Photoshop, I opened the Curves tool and moved the slider to the left to brighten the photo up just a bit. Zooming in, I could see a lot of noise and grain in the image. Back in Camera Raw, I zoomed in and opened the Details tool. Here's where I performed some basic denoise. In Photoshop, I needed to address the grain on the edges, so I used the cropping tool to trim down the photo. Here's the result. So I'm hoping to do here, later on this week, now the comet is pulling away from the sun, so we're kind of in a balancing act right now of how high above the horizon, how far away from the glare the sun gets, so you can see more of it, versus the fact it's pulling away from the sun and its brightness is dropping and the tail is going to be getting smaller. So I've heard estimates that roughly around Friday is when we're probably going to have some of the best viewing. So either Thursday or Friday, I'm planning on making the drive to the west side of Phoenix, it's gonna take a little time to get there, get myself some way out, some ways out of the light dome and into the darkness of the Sonoran Desert. And then hopefully we'll be able to uh, get much brighter, much better pictures with it. All right, everybody, hey, thank you for watching. As always, you know, hit that sub subscribe button. Appreciate your support, you all take care. I'll see you next time and possibly another special episode soon.